Now's the time to add collectible objects. So we're continuing on from the other two videos and we're going to add some pickups. So I'm going to add a cube in the hierarchy. I'm going to go plus 3D object cube. And once again, I'm going to reset the transform over here to zero. It's still below the play field, so I'm going to set the Y position to 0.5 to raise it up. I'm also going to make my cube smaller. So to set it apart from other things, I'm going to set the scale to 0.5 for the X, the Y, and the Z. I'm also going to move it out of the way so it's not hidden inside the player. And if I'd like to bring this into focus, I can simply just double click on the cube in the hierarchy. But first I think I'm going to call it pickup. And then just double click and it brings it into focus and I can wheel mouse out a little. Since it's a pickup, to make it stand out, we can also do a couple of things. Let's rotate it a bit and I'm going to set the rotation for X, Y, and Z to 45 each. And I'm going to go ahead and assign a material with a contrasting color. So I'm going to go to my Assets panel, go into my Materials, let's make another material, create Material, and call it Pickup. I think I'll make these red. And drag it to my cube. To add more interest, we can add a script to rotate it. So in the Assets folder, I'm going to go under Scripts and make another new script. Right click, create C sharp script, and I'll call this rotator. I'm going to go ahead and assign this to my pickup object and I'll double click to edit it. In this script, we can actually delete the start method because we don't need it. We'll only be using update. And this is a pretty brief script. We just want to add this line to rotate the cube. And in here, I'm going to do transform rotate. It's using a new vector 3 to rotate it 15x, 30y, and 45z each frame. And if we multiply it by time dot delta time, it will smooth it out and rotate it based on seconds versus frames. So I'm going to save this and go back to Unity to check it out. So now, as you can see, it's rotating. All right, so I want more than one of these pickups, right? So let's make about 12 of them. And the best way to do that is to make this into a prefab, which essentially is a blueprint for other instances of this pickup. I'm going to go here and go under Assets and make a new folder just to organize it. I'm going to right click and say Create Folder and call it Prefabs. And I'm going to go into that folder and drag my pickup into that folder. Now it's a prefab. Notice in the hierarchy, it now shows up as blue, showing that this is a prefab. Now what's great about it is I can actually just drag multiple prefabs out of the screen. But notice they're coming in at weird positions. So I'm going to delete those. And to more easily position this, I'm going to change the view of the scene. So I'm going to click on this green portion, Y, to look at it from the top perspective. And I'm going to wheel mouse out to see it. I'm also going to make a game object as a parent to organize these prefabs. So I'm going to say plus, create empty, and I'll call this pickups. I'm going to make sure to reset my transform of this to zero. And I'm going to grab my first pickup and drag it in there. Now let's position this where I'd like it to be. Now the odd thing about this is if I just start dragging it around, notice it'll go through different planes and it's not a really easy way to move it. So I'm going to undo both movements. A trick for this is if you hold down the shift key, it will let you ignore the Y plane, and it'll only go X and Z. So I can then drag it, and it will move parallel to the floor. So I'll put my first one here, and then I can duplicate this and position that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do this again. So I'm going to right click, I can say duplicate, 
and then hold down the shift key and move the next one where I want it to be. So I'm going to do this for 12 of them. You know, right click, duplicate, hold down the shift and move to the next one. And you can position these however you see fit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and jump ahead. So you don't have to watch me do this. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but arrange them in some sort of spaced out way, evenly or not evenly, your choice really. Once they're how you want them, you can switch back into more of a perspective view by holding down the shift key and clicking in the middle of this widget. And it puts it to a fairly nice view. If I hit play, you can see that now they all rotate. So that's what's pretty cool about prefabs. Because there is a script on the original prefab, all of the instances behave the same way. Okay, so now let's add a script to the player controller to detect pickups. The thing is, we need to identify what a pickup is. And to do that, we can use something called a tag. So since we want all of our pickups to have the same tag, let's look at the prefab. When I click on it, notice in the inspector, there is a tag, but it says untagged. So we want to make a custom tag. I'm going to go here and add a tag. Click on the plus sign, and I'm going to call it pickup. Now you have to be very specific about spacing and capitalization, so I'm going to make it one word, capital P, capital U, and save. So now I'm going to go back to my prefab, click on it. It says untagged, but now I'm going to assign it to the tag called pickup. So now I can go to the player controller script and add code to check for a collision. At the bottom here, I'm going to add a method called onTriggerEnter, and that's also built in. So I'm going to say void onTriggerEnter. When I hit the parentheses, it auto-filled this, but if it doesn't for you, you would add collider other. So it is going to be collecting a variable called other of type collider. Now we only want something to happen when it actually has the tag of pickup. So I'm going to add an if statement that says if other game object compare tag pickup. So if the other game object has a tag called pickup, it will run this. And what I want to do is actually set the other game object to false, which will then deactivate it. When I'm talking about other, that means the other game object that I run into. So I'm going to save this and go back to Unity. And if I run it, notice when I run into the blocks, it doesn't do anything yet. It's because it's looking for a trigger. So what I want to do is set the pickups collider to a trigger. So I'm going to also go back to my prefab. And I'm going to look at the built-in box collider. And notice it says is trigger. So I want to check that box. Now if I run into it, it will trigger the on trigger enter. So let's hit play. And when I run into it, it should now disappear. So it's essentially just deactivating the pickup. So now that we have that set up, in the next video I'll show you how to add UI and scoring.